I'm your host, Modingo, and with me, with a red solo cup, is Bro Pesci. What's up, man? <laughs> like Joe Pesci? <laughs> what the hell? He's like, I've been Bro Billy and like Mo- Bro Cephas. Bro- yeah. Bro Billy, Bro Cephas. I, you, <laughs> ever since you retired, yeah. man, are you losing your? Are you losing your mind, Mo? Are we dead? We I, take you out your back and put you down. Put me down. Yeah, I got. Yeah. To, I, I got rabies or something. Mo hasn't shaved in like. A week. Oh, it's probably how. When's the last time you went a week without shaving? Uh, when I went to Jamaica last year. <laughs> this retired life man. He come in. He's like uh, bumping reggae music. <laughs> All kinds of smoke come. No, no yeah, allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Yeah, uh, Rastafari <laughs> Mo over here <laughs> driving five miles an hour down the road. Yeah, <laughs> Mo, you're on the wrong side of the road. Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So thank you. For all the likes, follow, subscriptions, thanks for posting everyone, all of your friends and family members that have not uh, become part of the One More Rep podcast family. And if you didn't do that, shame on you. I'm just saying, Mo. Yeah. We're trying We're trying we're to tr- take world domination. Yeah, and they're not taking it seriously. Guys, it's, <laughs> it's time, all right? Like, you may think, I know I joke just a little bit, but this is serious time. World domination, 2018. Yeah. It's happening. Speaking of world domination, we've added a couple more countries oh. as far as followership. See, I never got this info yet. We got Jamaica. We got <laughs> I, go yeah, figure, ironically, right? Ironically, <laughs> yeah. We got Jamaica. We got Ireland and Romania. So that takes us up to thirty-five countries. And we've also added a couple of states. We added Nebraska and Louisiana. So now we are down to two states. So um, if you know anyone in Wyoming or Rhode Island, we need you to get on that. Gosh. Wyoming and Rhode Island. Anyone? You guys know anyone Does there? Wyoming even have internet? <laughs> I don't know, Mo. Do they? <laughs> I, I think so. Oh. All right. Well, Wyoming, what's up? Yeah, Rhode Island, what's up? Yeah. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsor, 75 Clothing. Check them out at 75clothing.com, making badass gear for your badass ventures. Uh, they sent us a nice, awesome yeah. care package. And oh, yeah, as Brody's yeah. wearing here, if you're on the YouTube, you can check that out. 7-5 logo and the nice American flag there on the back. Uh, well, hold on a second, Mo. You always do something to me, right? Mo always gets me. <laughs> he always gets me. So, I got, uh, here's a clothes. Sweet. Yeah. So, I got Mo. I give him his shirts from 7-5. They sent me and Mo. And uh, I rocked my, uh, I, wa- I rocked my black one. Put this up for the camera. I rocked my black one um, a couple days ago, man. It just, it's like this one. I just like how they fit. When I, we talked about last episode, dude. They do CrossFit and they know what we like to wear. And I, I'm just, who doesn't want a freaking American flag on their shirt? Yeah. I'm just and saying, if you don't, then stop listening to us. Yeah. Veteran known operated company. Again, they are CrossFitters, so they understand what it is we like in terms of apparel. You know, not too flashy, not too crazy, but still really solid designs, sick designs. And uh, they also do uh, uh, special orders because you're using them for a competition you got coming up here soon. Yeah, and custom gym orders. Uh, yeah. So, which and is huge, like for our members. Yeah. And looking on the website, uh, they seem to have sales pretty regularly. So, I think one they got going on right now is like 10% off. I'll take that 10%. But anyways, before we start, so I've been waiting for this for a long time. Mo just retired. And I was thinking, <laughs> what can I get Mo for a retirement gift? <laughs> he's laughing because he's nervous. He's nervous right now because I'm I can go sorts all sorts of directions. So I got him something that we're maybe we'll use today. Mm-hmm. All right. It's in a nice Oh yeah. On the outside it says bottle breachers. And for those of you that aren't familiar with bottle breachers, that is another veteran owned company. Uh, I first came across them on Shark Tank. Yeah. And the um, it's a husband and wife company. And uh, the husband is a formal na- former Navy SEAL. And the wife, I think, started the company on one of his deployments. Right. And when he came back and they finally decided, you know, it was time for him to hang up, 
the the uniform and start to uh, <laughs> raise a family, they started making these uh, bottle openers out of uh, 50 cal shells. And this one is a nice Air Force Blue. Air baby. Force Blue with a skull on it, uh, fashioned in the form of an American flag. And on the back, it says Senior Master Sergeant Modingo. Thanks, bro. That's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, bro. dude. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I got some special beers for me and Murray <laughs> drink today. I, I tapped into my own personal selection of beer. Of Sweet. beer. And I brought that. We got some German beer to drink today. Nice. Instead of this stuff that's local, <laughs> we went over the pond, baby. Awesome. So, this week's episode. With the CrossFit Games being over for about a week now, um, and to continue on from our when and why you should compete, this week we're going to talk about competing at that next level. And if you reach back and you remember, it was episode 18 where we talked about competing at first, and that was more geared towards newer CrossFitters who, you know, as a coach and owner, you see them, they're progressing and they're still lacking a little bit of confidence and maybe the way to get the next step that, you know, a little bit more ego, a little bit more belief in themselves is to have them compete. You know, yeah. you, you put them in between the lines and I mean, you obviously don't set them up for failure. You let them learn a lot about themselves mm-hmm. as what, as what, well, know, it's what we do in CrossFit. We're in here every day. Yeah. And, um, I forget I was talking to you about this. We're in here every day. It's cool to test yourself. Actually, mm-hmm. it was someone that was dropping. He, he's like, he definitely was interested in the competitive side. I'm like, yeah, it's good because we get, we train all the time. Why not test it? It's like <laughs> all the all these troops, they, they all they do is train to fight. Uh-huh. Well, they want to fight. Like they really do. <laughs> At some Even, point, yeah. Given the danger mm-hmm. that it is, but you can only you, know, you can only train so long before that, you want. Yeah, to. you can only keep that you know that line in the cage for so long before it wants to come out, and that's just the reality. Some people aren't aren't into the competitive scene; they're doing it for mm-hmm. GPP. Yeah, general physical and I tell you, yeah. th- they're just as important because they they come and cheer you on, and there's mm-hmm. nothing better than your crew being there, yeah. uh, rocking your uh, gym colors and cheering you on, and you know and talk, taking the pictures and well, they're talking your shit, Mo, is what's <laughs> happening. Because as a coach, you always tell them you're pushing them, and you tell them go go go. Well, when you're out there dying. What do you think they're saying? They're not like, oh, you're doing okay. No. They're like, you remember that one time, bro, last week? Get up. You know, just that's what they do. That, I think that's why they go. They really don't go to cheer you on. They go to, to get back. On. Yes, to there get back go. at you. Okay. Oh, are you tired? <laughs> that sucks. You might want to put some extra work in, Brody. Got you, bro. Nice. So in that first last episode, uh, we talked about uh, the beginning phases. Like you, you've been crossfitting for maybe about a year. You know, your coach wants to get you in a competition, develop some confidence. So now in this episode, we're going to talk about taking it to that next level. And that could mean multiple things. So the first part we want to talk about taking that next level is you've been crossfitting for a couple of years now. You're an RX athlete. You have the requisite high skill gymnast gymnastics. You're able to move, you know, a certain amount of weight, which, you know, might meet the requirements of some of the RX competitions in town. How do we get to that? That first step. So you've been a novice competitor. Now you now you're moving into that RX world, right? Uh, you know, a year or two of CrossFit experience. You got some of the requisite gymnastics, the re- requisite strength. What additional work or what additional commitment does it take to get to that level? So we were talking off camera. Typically, in your RX division, you still have teams that do it for fun, mm-hmm. right? They do. They may they know that they can do some of it, and this is mostly team because that's mm-hmm. what usually goes on. And um, so let's say that you typically have 30 teams mm-hmm. in, in a competition. So typically the bottom half relatively, especially that bottom third, they're in it for fun, just mm-hmm. with their friends. They can move some weight and have fun, and they're just that's why they're there. It gives their community a reason to get together. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So they're, they're supporting the event. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. People who want to take it serious and, and try to get to that top half is what sh- should be a minimum requirement. You should always want to finish in the top half. Mm-hmm. Or the top quarter, okay? That's that you have to set those goals as a competitor, as a competitor. Going, going in as a team as well. So the next step you need to do is if you if you've done that, um, you realize even though it's at a local level, the the tempo is a lot faster. The people that's going beside you are going a lot harder for mm-hmm. longer, right? So their their conditioning, their strength, their um, technique is all kind of paying off. Mm-hmm. Not every gym, but some gyms. So you have to figure, why are they doing that? And I'm dragging ass. Mm -hmm. Well, 
you got to put some work in, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to, it's going to start when you want to take that next step, you got to start put some, putting some extra work in. I'm mm-hmm. not talking like, you know, we're not talking about skill wise. You got to get your conditioning up. Like mm-hmm. you have to get your volume up, your conditioning up the stress at under heavy barbell cycling, mm-hmm. things like that. And find some really weird combinations to start making it suck worse in the gym. So it sucks less on the, okay. on the workout floor. Okay. So I think that's the first step is you really got to start, you got to up your game in essence and start taking stuff seriously. And one thing you said about looking to your left and your right while you're competing, a lot of times, and I know I fell victim to it, is that person sees you going and they go harder. Yep. Then you go harder. Yep. Then they go harder and your game plan shot. Yeah. What happened to me? <laughs> Why'd you bring that up? <laughs> you knew Mo was looking me right in the eyes. Okay, I have a camera now. Mo was looking at me. You guys can see this. Mo was looking me right in the eyes and uh, – He's had to turn my mic down because I'm getting fired up already. <laughs> he looked me right in the eyes, guys, and he he would he would his lips was saying something else, and his eyeballs were saying Arnold 2018. Well, I just wanted you to talk about that because you had a solid game plan, and then what happened? <sighs> All right, so we talked about it a long time ago, and I'm only going to talk about it again because I've buried it deep, it, it, because it's in reference to an episode. So it's for you guys. No, went out. Um, we were in the finals at Arnold. Uh, it was a day three. And the Arnold is probably one of the largest competitions in our area. happens at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, where basically you have every fitness sport represented on the planet Mm -hmm. during this whole weekend. Yeah, so we're there. This is our third straight year, fourth straight year as a gym doing Mm -hmm. it. And uh, we've had really good success. We haven't cracked the podium. We're finishing like fifth and sixth out of 40 and 50 teams. Mm -hmm. Um, And this year, this past year was our best. Okay, nice. Is our best. And um, minus the one scoring error by a judge who didn't give us a ra- full round of work, we went from like um, you know fourth place in that workout to twenty first because of it. Mm-hmm. Anyways, not I'm not pissed at or anything about that. Um, <laughs> still don't like that. Anyways, so um, we're in the finals going out. Um, it was a nine seven five three fifteen deadlift chest to bar, um, not heavy weight. Mm-hmm. Was different. Had the shorty bars. Yeah, definitely feels a lot different. Um, come out. My goal was nine unbroken. Come back, okay, four three. I want to be so I could crank out my chest bar, mm-hmm. and then come back and then go five unbroken, five unbroken, mm-hmm. just to break it up right in the middle. Because if you've never done this, it can get you uh, because the tempo is so fast, your heart rate's going. The reps are small, but it, the intensity, the the pull with the bar, and then the pull with the pull ups, totally different. It, mm-hmm. it really gets you. So come out nine unbroken. We're all there, you know. We're all on the bar at the same uh, ch- ch- or chest bar at the same time. Uh, come back. Uh, I'm start pulling. I'm on rep three. Dude beside me is on rep three. He goes rep four. I go rep four. He goes rep five. I go rep five. And I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> 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 and uh, so go unbroken on my sevens, and go unbroken seven chest the bar. I get back to my five deadlifts. And I went three, two, really, really hard deadlifts. <laughs> Dropped it and had to do three singles after that. And they were the heaviest. They felt like it was 405 on the bar. But anyways, finished that out. And um, But he's right. That's one of the things you're going to come across is that you have to stick to your game plan because yeah. everybody else has a separate game plan. Absolutely. You can't try and play up to somebody else's strategy. I can't help it. Some guy outweighs me by 30 pounds. Well, that doesn't, right? that, that doesn't hurt help things either. No. So, yeah, stay your game plan. And I very rarely fall off of it. And But that guy, he pulled me right in, Mo. He's like. Vichy's cups. <laughs> <laughs> I get him a nice bottle breacher. <laughs> and he, he Arnold me and he Reese cup me. So, you have to have those skill sets. you got to do some extra work. No, do you really need to make. What other things that are, what are the kind of sacrifices or, or what's the, what are some other costs associated with that going from that, you know, probably intermediate to RX athlete? Uh, I think a big thing is typically what will happen is um, you'll be strong enough to hit certain lifts. Uh, it could be snatch clean, but you may be lacking in some elements. It could mm-hmm. be technique, it could be mobility, flexibility. Um, you got to get your snatch and clean numbers up because that's a typical movement in every event. Mm-hmm. You got to get those. You got to get those snatch and clean numbers up uh, to match your squats, right? Okay. Like you have a three hundred pound clean, but you have a three hundred and seventy pound front squat. 
we gotta get we gotta narrow that gap. Okay. To me, so I, what should be the relationship? Uh, CrossFitters are pretty good at getting about twenty pounds, roughly twenty pounds, close as close to twenty pounds, fifteen pounds of their front squat max. Okay. And, and if it's much higher than that, if their front squat and their clean are the same, it's a false front squat. Something's max. wrong. Yeah. It's a false front squat max. That's good though because mm-hmm. that means they technically are probably pretty sound. Okay. Um, but that big discrepancy instantly I, it screams technique. Okay. Uh, there's a technical issue going on with your lifting. You got to get that tightened up. Is it straight technique? Is it um, mobility or flexibility? Mm-hmm. And especially in the snatch, you want you want to get that snatch number up. Um, it's it's extreme flexibility, mobility. Um, you got to have that. So where should your snatch number be then? That's tough. That's I found that one pretty hard to, you know, big thing we say is you know, whatever you can snatch, you can overhead squat multiple times. Okay. Right. So it's not even close to your overhead squat. So Mm -hmm. we usually, I usually use that in reference to don't panic in the bottom. Don't worry about if you have to chill down there for a minute, Mm -hmm. you can stand it up. No problem. Okay. We just got to get stable underneath it. That's a good way to look at it. Right. Because once you get it overhead, just stand up. Right. But some people will try to rush standing up because they're thinking about the weight. Mm -hmm. The weight is irrelevant. It's about maintaining that position. And, um, because you can even they could stand it up and they could overhead squat it a couple more times because it's not even close to their overhead squat max. Okay. Um, but yeah, you got to get your technique dialed in, your mobility flexibility dialed in, and I think that's one of the big things that you really have to start taking serious is getting those little things. The fine tuning. Absolutely, because the more elite you get in CrossFit, the more f- fine tuning you do, mm-hmm. and the smaller the things you fine tune. Okay, mm-hmm. because you've whittled it down to your competitive career mm-hmm. in essence and um now it's about getting these things are say they're kind of major addressing them getting them smaller and then when you get to that next level you just it's keep yep, really minor changes yep, yep you got it really small changes so then you start to compete locally you're at the rx level yeah and you say you want to get in that top third yeah or, yeah top third is good okay now to get to the podium what are yeah. we looking at here that's tough. You know, if you're doing a team event, you got to have a solid, a solid team. You know, it's when we do all of our team competitions, um, some people like to make super teams so they can podium. Mm-hmm. Uh, we like to send our people who are from our gym only. And um, so, and why people make these super teams is because they don't have the ability in house mm-hmm. to get to the podium. Mm-hmm. So they have to Re- poach or recruit or yeah, whatever, yeah. or. Th- Join forces, whatever mm-hmm. it is, and then when they podium, then you know they feel good about themselves, mm-hmm. right? Okay, whatever. So, in house, you have to really. It, it's not just you. I can be the best competitor ever, mm-hmm. but if my team isn't up, if with everyone me, isn't equally in, in strong their own right, across right? across the across the board, because in CrossFit you can't suck at one thing. No. That that's the you one thing you exposed, can't do. Right? Yeah, because you will get yeah you will get exposed. If you're really strong, you suck at gymnastics. There's going to be a, a piece where you have a mandatory gymnast, gymnastic movement. Handstand push-ups or Chest handstand bar, walk or whatever. Yeah, right. You know. And you don't have that. Well, now you, you're bringing your team down because you're going to get a zero on your portion. Mm-hmm. Or if you're a bodyweight ninja and you're weak as hell, mm-hmm. well, when those people, when your max lifts come and you're taking a team total, well, now you're going to fall in that bottom half because your number's so low. Mm-hmm. So you do have to be very well-rounded. I believe that, in my opinion, uh, we've always been – Based on a team of six, you have to have a, a strong female. Mm-hmm. You have to have a male and female. You have to have a male and female who is all around. And then you have to have someone that can cycle a barbell but has a, a more of an engine. Mm-hmm. So you can place them in their their best situations and you have great combinations to kind of work. So, with. like your ninja, your strong man, and your generalist. Yeah. And your or ninja. Your workhorse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, someone's great at the gymnastics, like, mm-hmm. you know, breaking off 30, 50, 60 pull ups, no problem. Mm-hmm. H- huge handstand push-up sets that way they can let your your big big strong people kind of rest through that portion Mm -hmm. and then crush that barbell element coming up so now you're starting to podium are there any other things that those podium guys are doing that that other that the guys that are like in the top 10 aren't doing yeah i think they're addressing those little issues that we talked about Mm there you know if you if you let me back that up they're addressing those issues, but it also to podium as a team, you really have to be a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just randomly. I've seen a lot of random teams get thrown together with really great individuals, but they don't work together as a team. So okay. 
when when Mo, Mo Mo's going hard and he's on my team and he's going to maximum effort and say it's a barbell we can cycle for max reps even though the barbell is light okay there's a point where his speed starts slowing down mm -hmm. right that's when a team needs to identify that I, yeah. or preset hey okay. i know you can do 30 but but you start falling off at 15 your okay? cycle rate right. increases so yeah. you're going to do 14 you're going to do 14 i'm coming in i'm going to do 12 per last person coming in they're finishing it. whatever you mm -hmm. know what i mean whatever the rest scheme is you figure that out. Well, these individuals, what they do, they don't know. To, they just want to go. They just go balls out. Yeah, they want to go balls out. They go to failure. And guess what? That's fine. Someone's already subbed in with a fresh person. Mm -hmm. Now they're going uh, one and a half reps faster than them. So you have to have that team chemistry and work. Now, as an individual, um, you, you got to start looking at your programming. Are you, how often are you working out? I, I'm not, I'm a huge advocate of uh, quality over quantity but i also believe in you have to have a large work capacity mm -hmm. um well that never hurts anybody never hurts so, anybody you know. i think you know you have to have the volume proper volume i think there's volume that can be too much and then there's proper volume which is kind for of for competition training purposes absolutely okay. right just so we'll give an example here so when we do our strength our wad our extra work th that day for anybody who wants to do it, mostly our competitors, but whoever, mm -hmm. they want to do it's tailored that day to separate itself from the workout. So we're not double dipping on You're things. not taxing a system so too much. Right. Okay. So if we're really heavy that, that day, we're going to do a more endurance type based workout. So because our CNS is smoked, mm -hmm. we're going to kind of chill. I'm not going to go heavy again. And then what will end up happening, that will kind of run your athletes into the ground. And then their normal training days, like, by the time they get to Wednesday, Thursday, they're probably smoked, mm -hmm. and now they're not getting effective training. So the volume okay. is too much. If you do so, a smart volume. Yes, yeah, so you got to do proper volume. Proper volume is yes, I can do a lot of work, and I can program a lot of work. If you program it properly, their capacity is going to go th much higher than a gym that is just like let's go heavy, 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 mm -hmm. which I'm cool with, but <laughs> um, but your your athletes are going to start getting crushed because. Mm -hmm. Their performance is going to start dropping off through the week on the normal workouts. Mm -hmm. When that, okay, so yeah, I can work out, but can I attack that workout, okay. right? So I'm sore and beat up. Get the appropriate stimulus out of that yeah, particular workout. Right. So I got seven rounds, but if I was fresh, I got at 12. So now- It's a huge difference. Huge difference. When we talk about weight moved over that yep. workout. Weight moved or just rounds in general. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it was an endurance workout, but I can't go because my, I'm smoked. Or maintaining your red line for a longer period Absolutely. of time. Absolutely. And you can't because you're, you're crushed. So you got to get that. You got to find what your programming is. Is it smart volume or dumb volume? And that's I think that's really where it's at. And I, I see people like always post, well, I got to work out more. I got to work out more, 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 more. I'm like, well, maybe you got to work out smarter. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not always. More. And again, it's one of those things we've talked about before. Like sometimes you don't know what you don't know. No, you're right. It's like the Rich Froning effect. Ever, when Rich Froning hit the scene at games and he started winning, people was looking at what he was doing for training. They're like, well, people started to try to train like him. We can't. Mm -hmm. People tried it and they failed. You have to train with inside your means. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, so Rich Froning worked out four times today. Uh, I'm going to work out four times a day. Cool. You can do that maybe for two days. And then what's that third day look like? Mm -hmm. What's your training look like after that? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of find out if you don't have the access to programming. We've talked about mm -hmm. this multiple times. You got to find something to follow that is structured. And I still believe that comp train. Actually, I just talked to a guy about this. Comp train is definitely better than misfits, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if you have to go that route and you have no other avenue, that's one thing. Seek out another coach mm -hmm. that can be remote coaching, remote programming. That's your best bet, and then go to comp train, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But you gotta get proper volume and smart volume in. No, but going now, touching back on that podium piece, though, how, what impact or what influence do the actual workouts have? You know, like if it's biased towards body weight versus, you know, biased towards strength, th yeah. does does that have an influence on it, or should we always be prepared to attack yeah. whatever bias that each competition has? You got to, you know, it's. Uh, we've done it several times as a, as a gym, uh, we'll finish in the top three and four out of the five events. And the one event we throw mm -hmm. like 22nd, yeah. knocks us off the podium, right? Mm -hmm. We're sitting podium top one, two all day, except for one workout, one workout. Right. And it's not because 
not because of capacity, we just attacked it, attacked it wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, it's so, yeah, I think you have to be ready for everything, mm-hmm. right? Because you're, if you're well-rounded, the, the more well-rounded you are, the better you are. Because when you have those discrepancies, a team that's really strong and they get to finals and the finals workout is a body weight, m- middle, like um, a medium barbell. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not going to do as well because, yeah, they can cycle that barbell, but they're getting crushed on the other elements, so they're slower off the bar. And that goes back to the cycling thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they can do chest to bar, but they're getting smoked three to one by our little dude, mm-hmm. right? So that's what it is. It's like you have to be very well rounded. Um, just you got to find those holes in your game. Mm-hmm. I just when you when you're at that when you were podium all the time, you have to find holes in your game, and I think that's something that exposes you. Uh, three years ago, we were at uh, our girls made finals down at tracks and um they crushed the burpees right no it was uh muscle ups okay crushed them uh they crushed the competition all day get the finals uh they're sitting second i think second or third and uh there's uh it was amanda nine seven five Mm -hmm. uh, full snatch muscle Muscle ups yeah well jenna's only one had muscle ups Mm -hmm. supposedly (laughs) (laughs) because she had them at the gym Uh it's sort of like Stu said like Okay, you can do – you did a muscle up. Now, get now let me see you again. do another yeah. one. Okay. And that's kind of where it was hit or miss. Well, <clears throat> at the end of the competition, she was missing, right? Mm-hmm. And it was very um, – I don't know. It opened the door of like, hey, stupid, you got to work on this a little bit more and figure okay. these out. Yeah. And I think that's what was good because um, – A learning opportunity. It lit a fire under her butt to – take the coaching Mm -hmm. some more and then actually start practicing them and stop being pissed and and bitching about when you're failing and understand that every failure is is opportunity to learn yes and i think that's where people get hung up in training and i will use jenna for this she does she is very good a very good athlete and she struggles with when she doesn't do well and that's not just her that's all your top athletes Mm -hmm. they struggle they're harder on themselves than anyone else yes so when they get an element like we had trip wonders last week my gym, the roof about blew off because people were getting so pissed, mm-hmm. right? Because I've introduced something that, well, okay, I can do one. Well, now we're in the middle of a fifteen-minute AMRAP with them, and we have a, it's a couplet, so you can't hide from them. And, yeah. and the other, and the other element is twelve unbroken power snatches every single round. So you, now you got to get them in a fatigue state, mm-hmm. right? People were not happy, Mo. Mm-hmm. They weren't very frustrated, but. You have to use that as a progression like she did at the tracks, mm-hmm. the muscle up. You have to use that and let that fuel you to train harder at that and figure that out. And so next time they come up, you're crushing them. Now, do you necessarily have to podium on every competition or is it, you know, finding yourself within that top, you know, 5%? Is that acceptable before think, you try and yeah. go on to this next level? Right. So I think it depends on your competition. Okay. We, we've always talked um, – Genetti puts on the Arnold, and then he puts on um, Validus games. Yeah. And we truly all, always believe that Validus games is tougher than the Arnold uh, uh, competition-wise. Yeah, because well, the elements for one, because it's hot. That it's it's <laughs> well during the Arnold is the first week of the second week of the Open. Okay. So your regional athletes aren't competing typically, okay. right? Okay. That makes and sense. Most of them aren't. Okay. So when you get to Validus, well, they're out. They're they're competing now. They're on these they're on these teams. So we've always felt that if we can place top five at Validus, mm-hmm. and we don't podium. Uh, we're pretty happy with that. Okay. And and that's that's one element. But the Arnold, it we're 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 t- we're talking top five or we're not happy. Okay. Right. So so understanding your competition, I guess, is yeah. one thing you're you're because pointing out here. It goes to you know you want to be prepared for everything. But if, if the if the workouts kind of are swayed to one extreme or the other, mm-hmm. and you're you're good, but just not the another team is better, better at yeah. the element, that kind of happens, you know. And it's hard to do that in program. You try to do it as a um, throwing event. You want it to be as well rounded as possible, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, that's what happens. You and you have to notice that, like, okay, we didn't do bad at these events because it's not our greatest stuff, mm-hmm. right? Or it's not our best lift as a gym. But, um, but you know that that's the reality of it. We just got to work harder to clean that up, so we start closing that window if it comes up again. Okay, solid. So now we've talked about competing locally, competing in house, you mm-hmm. know, at this level. So now the next level that I see when it comes to that competitive level is probably some of those 
competitions that have the online qualifiers. So yeah, your 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 big three: Wadapalooza, Granite Games, and Cascade Classic. Yep. So if if you're not familiar with those, in order to make it to the actual competition, you have to compete in an online qualifier, similar style to the Open. There's a they'll release the workouts. You have a certain amount of time to do them, and you have to meet certain requirements, like whether it be video or have a judge or all that sort of stuff. So it's kind of following that open format. Mm-hmm. I would see that as the next evolution in competition. Yeah, I think we can actually hit this in two different ways. One, you're talking about RX athlete. I think this is a great way to test your programming and your training uh, mid competition season yeah. or post competition season because mm-hmm. Wada Plus is getting ready yeah. to come it's up. In, yeah, it's in January. But the the qualifier oh. I think starts in September. Okay, August or September. The first online qualifier comes out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you just had Granite Games qualifier a few, I think it's in June. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're mid competition season there if you're looking at competition season. Um, and then obviously you have the Open. And then uh, Cascade Classic is also a fall. Yeah, they're right around the same time mm-hmm. as um, Granite Games. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, those, those qualifiers um, are a really good way to kind of, hey, where am I at against people that's not local? Okay. Am I actually, and what am I doing is what I'm doing working against people across the nation, mm-hmm. right? So you can kind of see that. Now, let's take it to the next level. Yeah, you got to hit these qualifiers. If you're an individual competitor and that's what you want, say you're, and we're most kind of going with this, we're trying to set it up to people who want to do well in the open and go to regionals. Mm-hmm. This is where your ultimate test is. You, are you in the elite division of the men and women? Mm-hmm. What do you look like? How's your, how's your workouts in comparison? And what kind of holes do you have to clean up before they open? Because I truly believe I, t- I was talking to my buddy, Zach, uh, he listens to our podcast. Um, he actually qualified as an individual for granted games. He mm-hmm. got, he got injured. So he had to just pull out, um, on a freak accident. But, um, I was telling you know, through text messages, we will talk back and forth about stuff that actually just like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, look, your ultimate goal is the open, mm-hmm. right? doesn't the, the CrossFit world revolves around the open. Yeah. Like we, we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and admit that. Yeah. yeah. Your ultimate goal is to do well in the open, set yourself up to do well enough to make it to regional. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, he should already have been a two or three time regional athlete. Mm-hmm. This is the way it is. And just taking a step back for reference. Uh, and I'll use Wada Palooza for a specific example with them. They have a RX division, but above and beyond that, they have the elite division. And those are the guys that you're seeing in like heats three and four in yeah. the games. Right. So just to kind of give you a reference of what level of athlete we're talking about here. Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, you got to set, what is your goal? Is your goal to qualify for Granite Games and go there and win Granite Games? Mm -hmm. Is that your goal? Or is your goal to qualify for Granite Games and be like, okay, I just verified my training. Mm -hmm. Cool. I have, I just qualified as a male elite athlete, uh, in the, in the individual division. My my training has been verified. I am on the right track because I'm going to be competing against some of the same guys when the open rolls around. Okay. Right. So then I gotta. That's what I want to. Are you concerned about winning the Granite Games and going there and or winning? qualifying? Those are two different things. Right. Yeah. Because should he have went to Granite Games? Yeah, I think he could have. I think it's good to kind of see what that training, uh, that tempo we talked about mm-hmm. earlier, going against those elite, because that's what he. That's the kind of heat you got to bring when it comes into the open, cause you're going to get the same, same people. Mm-hmm. Right. And the workouts I think are a little bit harder at granted games than what the open is. Mm-hmm. So it kind of tests you on a, a whole other level as okay. well. And for me, like w- what Brody's talking about, when you're saying like getting on the competition floor and seeing the speed and the strength of these athletes, the thing I can equate it to is, um, when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to work as a ball boy for a couple of college all-star games, like, you know, the orange bowl, all that, or sorry, the senior bowl and things like that, blue and gray. And I remember being a high school sophomore and seeing how big and how fast these guys were moving that I knew at that moment in my life, I had to focus on academics because <laughs> I was not going to make it in, right. you know, in division one college football. Same thing with volleyball. You know, I was avid volleyball player when I was younger and I had the opportunity to watch the U S national team play. You know, I'm sitting up in the stands. I'm like, Oh, you know, they look all right. Got down to court level and you see how big and how much ground they're covering and how high they're jumping and how hard they're hitting that ball. It's in, I, I'm, I'm sure it's the same thing. Like the first time I went to regionals and, you know, I'm, I'm watching guys cause in our, at the time we had Pancheck and Froning, um, Bailey, you know, and seeing those guys that I work out side by side with on a daily basis and seeing these elite, mm-hmm. like 40 fittest humans 
on the planet, seeing how fast they move and how effortlessly they move. And some of them didn't even seem necessarily overly taxed at right. the end of the workouts. And I'm like, dear God, this yeah. is these people are, are on a different level. I got a pretty good example here, you know, with the open just ending. We had a local man in Barnhart mm -hmm. from Centerville CrossFit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, she, she actually won an event. Won an event. Yeah, first pretty, time. Yeah. She, really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, Coach Mitch Lyons. Mm -hmm. Going to give you props because, you know, some people didn't. But <laughs> uh, I think athlete coach is a huge, important relationship. Um, yep. And I think that they And, have, yeah, that's that next piece we're going to yeah, talk about here. And they have that. And um, she got into the top heat. Yep. on a um it was a snatch actually is what the crossfit community voted on it was the snatch and bar muscle up heavy power snatch first bar yeah. muscle up and then they had to go into the um lighter snatch um chest to bar pull up 21 15 9 and mm -hmm. then i think it was 12 12 9, 9 6, 6 right mm -hmm. and um she's out there with all your big hitters right mm -hmm. all, Top, the, your, all the girls your, that you see on posters when you go yep. to the reebok store yeah you know. yeah multiple games winners was on that wild yeah. floor and she's going against them and she didn't do well in essence of that heat. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> right? when you take into consideration who she's competing yes. against. So these girls are crushing it, right? And it, I'm not saying – I don't know what her strengths and weaknesses are. She's mm -hmm. definitely a strong lifter. And um, the gymnastics, you can't say, well, her gymnastics suck. That's why she got beat. No. She's going to get some pretty freaking good people. She's going to get right? some level 10 gymnasts, Absolutely. collegiate gymnasts. Yes. And, you know. and it's going to make you look slower than what you are because <laughs> I think she, she went in there 10th and she only fell to 12th, but she didn't finish too well in those events. Mm -hmm. But it just it's, – it's eye-opening. Mm -hmm. She won an event. She's in the top 10, but everybody's so much faster than mm -hmm. her. And the well, last example I'll use is when they did that um, – what was that workout where they didn't know the elements? What, the chaos, chaos. one? Chaos. So that was nasty. So you got the chaos, right? Yeah. And all 40 athletes. None of them know what's about to happen. Right. They don't yeah. know it's about to happen. But all 40 athletes were on the um, on the grass at one time. Everybody's finishing. And then you're talking to 40 fittest it is humans, humans on the planet. planet. Okay, the men. Everybody's done. Then there's three or four or five guys out there who still. Who didn't they, finish. They don't even finish the workout. And these guys have been done for minutes. Yeah. The separation is that big, Mo. Like, you're the – okay. I'm the 40th fittest guy in the world. And I'm not even finishing a workout. I'm not even finishing a workout. Yeah. Right? And, and, you, and you can't look at it and be like, oh, well, I yeah. guess he's just not that no. good. No. He is that good. <laughs> he didn't accidentally just stumble out there and like, oh, I fell, yeah. I fell through I regionals. I fell into it, yeah. I, I, I fell through regionals and yeah. I fell out to the, you know, the games. No. He just – you see what it's like. It's, it's he, like he beat out people in a country or a four or five state region or a couple of countries, depending on what region yeah. you come from. I yeah. think a cool uh, a cool thing they do on when you watch the NFL draft is when they take everybody's forty times mm -hmm. and then they they really screw over the offensive linemen because they'll put the offensive linemen against like a DB yeah and they uh, you know simultaneously run their yeah uh, oh and they race, overlay them yeah. overlay them and like this three hundred and twenty pound lineman. Is running a four. You talking about Wednesday overlay Jadavian Clowney and uh, Johnny this, Manziel? They, they do a lot, but I'm yeah. saying these 350 pound, 340 pound defensive ends, and yeah. defensive ends. They're running a four six forty. Yeah, faster than what I'm going to run. Yeah, right. But and you're like half the size. Right, but it, they look so slow when they're running against <laughs> someone that is uh, running a a, a four two a four two forty. <laughs> No, but you talk about freakish athletes when they had Jadavian Clowney uh, overlaid with uh, Johnny Manziel, and they and uh, Clowney ran like a point one faster than him. That was obscene. Right, and he weighs a hundred pounds more. Yeah, exactly. Okay, back on topic. Uh, now we're talking about these elite, you know, probably fringe of going to regionals. Yeah, um, they they obviously have the requisite skills. They obviously have the requisite strength, but. Things like diet and training and mm. having a coach. Yeah. I'd imagine that's that next step to get you to that level. Got to, yeah. Because what you're going to find is when you start hitting these some qualifiers and you start uh, going against people that's not in your area, um, you're going to find out that they have something that you don't. Mm -hmm. And you got, what the hell do they have? Because mm -hmm. I put the work in, but it all comes down to proper work. And I think that. Having a coach, what, what what it does for you is, okay, you can do 
50 chest to bar unbroken. That's great, mm -hmm. right? But here's what I see. I like your 50, right? But when you come off, you're pretty trash because your technique, you're kind of missing some You're technique. not as efficient. You're not very efficient mm -hmm. at them. You can do 50, but I need you to do 50. I need you to come over and pick up this barbell that's mm -hmm. really heavy, okay? And then do 30 overhead squats. Right. Yeah. So this is that's what I need. So I got to look at you, your coach has to look at those movements and be like, okay, look, I, not knocking you, 50 is a great number, mm -hmm. but I'd like to do, what if we could do 60? What if we could do 70? Mm -hmm. So and then when we have 30, we're very fresh, mm -hmm. right? It's just like the heavier you lift, the easier just, you can Just cycle. a reference yeah. to Amanda Barnhart. Yeah. She hit that, she won that clean and jerk ladder, but guess what? She had the heaviest clean out of all the women at the, at the or at the game. So the relative amount of work she was doing to everybody is yeah, is less. Yeah, so she's power she power clean push jerked at last weight 225. No yes, problem. Yes, she did. Because you know why? It's her she's strong. No, cuz it's her 85%, bro. Yeah. That's what it was. I figured it was 85%. <laughs> well, I can do that with my 85% too. Yeah. But other girls don't have that 85%. Mm -hmm. That's like their 90 95. Yeah. So what we got to do is kind of get your technique and say, "Hey, Here's what we're going to do. I want you, we're going to start trying to keep, you flow your feet out at the bottom when you kip. I want you to try to bring your legs together. I want you to point your toes down. I want you to really use that core to extremity. Mm -hmm. We're going to not only get you more efficient, we're going to recruit less muscles because we're going to have more energy transferred in this technique mm -hmm. that and then return is going to allow you to stay on no longer, longer or come off fresher. Mm -hmm. That's what you need a coach for to find out these small things that, they already have, they can do, but make them better. Just fine tuning everything. Got to, right? Hey man, I'm glad you can clean clean and jerk 350. But what about 375? Cuz this is what I'm seeing. You're missing some you you're very unstable in your shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. You're you're missing, you can clean that shit all day, but you're missing the jerk. You got some stability issues. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm seeing. Show them the video I mm -hmm. take, okay? See your right shoulder? It's very unstable in that jerk. It's collapsing because it's there's there's something going on in there. We're going to have to get with the PT here and see if we can get some stuff figured out. Make sure we get that stability set up. So now when you get underneath that heavier clean and jerk, it's no problem. So having that coach that can point out your areas of, that you need to improve on, fine tuning your game will in turn make everything more efficient. Because as an athlete looking in the mirror, you only see what you see. You can't see yourself. I mean, you can look at video and watch yourself doing butterfly you know, chest to bars and all that stuff. You can you can look at a video and see yourself you know, doing certain things, but if you don't have that background, what finding those little bitty things, you know, without and having that coach that can identify those areas mm -hmm. that will give you that extra ten percent might be the difference between you podiuming and not, or making top twenty in the open or yeah. not. Yeah, you finish in fortieth or fiftieth, that you probably didn't have a coach because mm -hmm. you're good enough. If you finish, you have the requisite you have, skills. You, you yeah. are good enough. You probably don't have a good coach, and uh, or you don't have a coach, or like don't have said, a coach yeah. at all. And I think that I want to touch on with that is, like, the good thing about having a coach and having having some input is even if it's remotely. Hey, coach, I have this video. Uh, can you check it out? Just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I can review it, okay? Because we've talked, you've talked about uh, Michael Jordan would not make a great coach. Because he didn't understand why everyone couldn't score 40, 20, right. you know, 40, 10, 10. You right. Know? So great athletes, if they can recognize, like, look, I, I know I'm doing something wrong. I can't see what I'm doing wrong because they're, they're an something athlete. doesn't feel right. They're an yeah. athlete. Hey, can you check this video out on my snatch? My whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, here's what's going on, man. You, your weight shift into your toes. We've got to keep that mid mm -hmm. foot and heel so we can keep driving through that floor. Okay. Because. When, it, when you get too heavy, you're hopping forward. We got, we got you hopping forward is going to kill that that lift, right? Mm -hmm. Having that coach with the instant feedback, guess what that gets them? Next day, they can apply it. Mm -hmm. That's what or it is. Or even right there on the spot. Or right there on the yeah. spot if they have the coach there. That's what's critical because now there's no wasted time between training. And, you're no, and you know if you do something that's a bad, uh, bad repetition, you do it over and over again, it's mm -hmm. still bad. Yeah. Even if you're getting the weight up, it's still bad. It's still bad. But also – Sometimes a coach can explain something to an athlete that the athlete doesn't understand they're doing incorrectly. Absolutely, because you don't feel it. Yeah. Th well, this is just this is what I do. Well, okay. Well, you know when you come to this position, you know, and you feel and you start and your elbows start dropping down. Okay, I need you to drive that out. Oh, well, why do I do that? Well, just okay, well, do that one more, one couple times and then tell me how you feel. Oh shit, that feels way different. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's great teaching points 
because we've talked about it where um, we, we were talking about when we run clinics, kind of how you can – you have a three-hour block. You can introduce some smaller, like – Micro changes. Micro changes yeah. to people. It's cool when you have a coach, even hands-on, especially hands-on, because mid-wad – that they're coaching that you're working out in mm -hmm. like, Hey bro, you're really coming up on your toes and your pistols. Let's, let's work today. The rest of these reps, I don't care what your score is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't care what it is, but I want to make sure we can keep that full foot flat. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we find, is it, is it mobility or is it technique? Because well, one side he's doing it fine. The other That's side he's not yep. right. So here's what I know. You're efficiently going to be much better and faster because you're going to be able to do a pistol, stand up, rock the other leg, do a pistol, stand up. Now your cadence is so much faster. You're cruising, cruising, mm -hmm. cruising mm -hmm. because you're efficiently moving. When you can get that, dude, I can stop you mid-wad and be like, hey, look, you're crushing it, but let's do this today. Forget your score. Mm -hmm. Every time we get these, I want you to take a little bit more time on that leg, but I want you to force, force that. Force yourself to keep that I heel want, down. I want yep. that heel down every single time because guess what? Even though they're competitor, even though they want to score high, not to beat everybody because they just that's just what, how they're wired, <laughs> yeah. right? They're just wired that way. When they walk away with a win like that, like, mm -hmm. dude, my last 60 pistols on that leg, my heel was down. That's amazing. I've been doing pistols for three years. And, and my no heel, one's ever, yeah. My heel has never touched the ground. That's like, that's a huge win to them. And last thing I want to cover, um, and I think it kind of sums all this up, is like the commitment. Because, you know, commit. we talked about diet, nutrition, and that – sticking to a diet is harder than sticking to a training program, yeah. you know, you know, taking the time to meal prep, you know, taking the time to talk with maybe even a nutritionist at this level. You know, if you don't have a coach that doesn't have both, that isn't, doesn't have the ability to wear both hats. Um, well, let's talk about that real quick. Cause we did talk about this off camera was we want to talk about nutrition. And I think why it's pivotal is especially when, Oh yeah. The five like, pounds we yeah, talked about. Right, yeah. yeah. So women out there who struggle uh, most with the, the gymnastics, with the yeah. gymnastics are like, well, I have chest the bar, but like after 20, I start to fall off. I have to go to smaller sets. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to look, you're very fit clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But can we lose a little bit of weight? Not in a bad way. It's not body shaming. It's like, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. If you're five or six pounds lighter, I promise you, I promise you that your gymnastics will highly improve. Mm -hmm. Your uh, body weight movements will highly improve. Box jumps, burpees, handstand pushups. less weight you have to move. Less weight. And I've found that five to six pounds per female is critical mm -hmm. if they have it. And then uh, men, um, you know, you got your big boys, 215. Mm -hmm. You got to get them closer to 205 because when you get those toe to bar, bar muscle ups, mm -hmm. chest to bar pull ups, th those really take a, a hit on them. Yeah, yeah. And I can personally testify to that because I just got to the point where I was able to, you know, cycle some bar muscle ups and I got really sick. And I gained a bunch of weight because I had to take a bunch of medication. And I gained about like eight pounds. Went to go back and do some muscle ups. Uh uh. uh, -uh. <laughs> yeah. And that's no joke, right? It is. So don't think it like, hey, um, hey, I need, I, look, let's look at your diet. What's going on? We need, we need to cut something down, right? We got to yeah. get, we got, you're 152 pounds. Let's try to get you 146. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, you lose weight, and that's yeah. That is, <laughs> yeah at the end, worst right? thing that happens is you lose eight pounds. Right? Okay, Let, let's tighten up your nutrition. Yeah, let's let's dig into that. Let's get that dialed in. Let's bring you down, and then let's see how you perform at that weight. Mm -hmm. Let's see how your recovery is. Let's see how your strength is. You're not going to lose strength at, at five six pounds, no. right? If you're talking fifteen twenty, absolutely, you can lose strength. Mm -hmm. You'll get it back, but whatever. That's huge, and it's worked for our female athletes especially, and um. It, and our male athletes. I mean, you got it. You got to tighten that nutrition up, mm -hmm. not for only performance, but efficiency of movements, mm -hmm. right? And then, so then, doing all these things. You said you're going to do extra work. Um, you're going to have to spend some extra time making those micro changes, and all those things add up to time. Is is what it all basically boils Just down to? A lot of time. A lot of time. And there are some people out there that truly do not have the ability to make that sacrifice of time. You know, you might be a full-time college student, you, you know, with a job, or you might be, you know, a, a parent with kids, you know, then you got to go see the soccer games and all that stuff. And, and I'm not... But Matt Fraser won games. Well, he was a med student? Mm, engineer, I think. Engineer, okay. But two years, he won games. Or, sorry, he got second, right? <laughs> he got second, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Matt. I know you ain't listening. <laughs> But if you do, whatever, I didn't. Yeah. No disrespect, bro. <laughs> uh, you got He got second, but he was a full-time student. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Right? And then Camille, you take Julie Fouché, Julie same Fouché, thing. Julie Fouché, Camille, 
the, uh, the, they're, uh, they're in the jo- col- Josh Bridges, right? You know, they're in the freaking special operator, right? They're in the college. They're in that collegiate. Like they're getting ready to graduate. Yeah, they put the time in, but he'll even tell you that he couldn't focus as much on it as he wanted to. Mm-hmm. But he f- still got second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he focused focused enough. No. Yeah, right. And you can do that when you start saying, "Well, I only have this much time. This much time." Mm-hmm. I bet you if you got up earlier, you could get stuff done, mm-hmm. right? And it's just a matter of, like, you have to make sacrifices if this is a path that you want to pursue. Mm-hmm. And this will go for anything, not just CrossFit, you yeah. know. If you want to be valedictorian, you know, if you want to break that four-minute mile, you know, if you want to be able to get those 100 unbroken double-unders, you know, anything that you want to excel at, it takes sacrifice. It's just not going to come. You have to commit to it. And with – with rare exception, do people just automatically say one day, oh, well, I want to go to the games. Now, granted, it has happened a few times because these people are just like biological freaks. Um, but for the 80% or the 90% of us, it's going to take a lot more than a wish. You got to have a plan. You got to have commitment. You got to have support. And you just have to commit to it. Yeah, and I was telling Mo before we started, like, a lot of people won't take a peek behind the curtain until you see what's behind, <laughs> what's the, curtain, behind the curtain. Yeah. Right. And you're like, nope, I don't want mm-hmm. that. Right. Because, oh my gosh, I see it every year, every year. Oh, I'm preparing for regionals. Bro, you're not even making it out of the open. <laughs> Why are you preparing for something you can't go to? I see yeah. it on social media all the time, like, prepping for the regionals. Yeah. Bro. Like honestly, let's let's be real. Me, me prepping for regionals, getting my ticket, my hotel, right. yeah, <laughs> time we, off from work. Yeah, right. I'm just saying, like, be real, okay. Yeah. Don't think you're gonna just breeze through the open when mm-hmm. you never have, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and if if you are on that fringe and you have you were close to making out of the open, then you're not making posts like that. People don't no. make, people don't make posts like that that are, are in it. And we talked about when people would. Um, who are part of those competitors yeah. uh, classes, like, and they can barely clean, you know, the barbell, mm-hmm. and but because they pay the extra money, they're part of the competitors classes. Mm-hmm. So, um, how disrespectful are they? They'll take their equipment out, and they think they own the gym, and they they have precedence over your general public. Mm-hmm. Then your real athletes are in the corner doing their stuff, being quiet. They're being quiet, quiet professionals, respectful. Yep. Most of them. There's some douchebags out there, Mo. <laughs> I've seen some really <laughs> douchebag regional athletes. I really have, and it sucks. But you can't always, you can't get rid of all the douchebags in the world. No. If we could, I'd like to head that head that, head that mission. <laughs> all right. Uh, mission one: kill douchebags. Mission yeah. two: kill lady who talks smack about my crooked lines. And then three: get rid of uh, Halo Top. <laughs> I think I think mission two just, just dropped just off. Swap places. Yeah, okay. I'm sw- switching two and three here. I, that's my top three missions if I'm going to be a part of that. All right, so bringing this week's episode to a close, our call to action. Um, what are your goals when it comes to competition? You know, do you, are you trying to make regionals? Are you trying to make it to one of these elite uh, online qualifiers? You know, kind of just share with us uh, what it is you're doing because I guarantee you, you share that type of information with the rest of the family here, uh, and you might motivate someone or you might give someone a clue or a tip on how they can achieve those sort of things. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think what, what's cool is, you know, People will post something and they're like, oh, yeah, I feel that way, too. And then another person says, oh, that's really good insight. Mm-hmm. I feel that way, too. I think you, if you spark a conversation, it's amazing what can happen mm-hmm. through that conversation. And you'll find that just like CrossFit, I think people who listen to this podcast, you can almost bet you guys are all kind of wired the same yeah. or you would not listen to us. Yeah, you wouldn't be uh, what? This is what, 35 episodes 35 in? 35 and we're 700 <laughs> from the Big 10K. <laughs> from the Big 10K. Dude. I've been dreaming about 10K since we started. Like, now it's going to be 100K, Mo. We've got, like, a lot of work to do. But And now we got video, so make sure you check that out on YouTube as well. Thank our sponsor, Senpai Pro, to make it badass gear for your badass ventures. This brings this week's episode to a close. I'm Mo, and I'm out. Peace, baby. Thank you for listening to the One More Rep Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at One More Rep Podcast or on Twitter at Can I Get One More or shoot us an email at Can I Get One More at gmail.com.